And actually, my success is also going to be dependent on my customer success. So it's, it's getting that balance right. And if we become too independent, it's not as effective if we understand those interdependencies and that whole kind of teamwork ethos that we need to, to, bring, to you know, bring, bring to the game, if you like. This is Outside Sales Talk, the best podcast for outside salespeople. I'm your host, Steve Benson, and we're here to chat with the world's top sales experts so that you can get their best sales tactics to level up your game. Welcome back to Outside Sales Talk. Today, we've got Fred Copestake with us, and we're going to talk about selling through partnering skills. Always a, an important topic. Uh, Fred, great to, great to have you on the show here. No, thank you. Thanks for inviting me. So good to, good to meet you. And uh, Fred is the founder of Brindis, um, a sales training consultancy. And uh, over the last 22 years, he's traveled around the world 14 times going to 36 countries and working with 10,000 salespeople um, over, in over 200 companies. So that's a lot. <laughs> and uh, he's, ta- he's taken some of the things that really make a difference in modern selling and put them into his book, which is selling through partnering skills. To kick off, um, first question I had for you, Fred, you know, so sales has evolved in, in, in many ways. Uh, throughout each decade, what what do you looking back? What do you what do you think we've learned from this evolution? Um, we've learned a little bit from each, and what I do in the book, probably the easiest way for us to sort of go through this is to look at each decade. We'll go back to the fifties and pick what you understand what was doing there, and sort of pick the stuff out there that, that I think is still relevant. Um, because though I like to talk about modern selling, we don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. You know, we want to make sure that we're using the stuff that's still highly relevant. You know, so if you, if you look at the 50s and what, what's interesting, I find, I find is that what's happening in sales reflects the era, reflect what else was going on on a bigger scale. And, and the 50s was very much about process. And so you think about, you know, pro, the production and process and everything. And, and for sales, it was very much about having tried and tested methods, about having good process, having good structure. And. Well, if anybody said to me today that that was a bad idea, I'd, I'd look at them like they were mad. I mean, yes, we want to have a good solid process, whether it's for your meeting, whether it's for your overall planning, whatever way you want to have a, a system to operate. So, you know, I, th- I think that's still relevant now. <laughs> what do you think? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and well, I guess what, you know, I, I think clearly the rev- the all, all of our learnings from this evolution are still relevant. Uh, it, I guess... Tell me about uh, the ways that you, that you that you find the relevance today in in these learnings that you've had from from the history of sales. Yeah, I mean, so so that's the fifties. Let, let's move on. Let's let's do a little skip through the decades. Yeah. So if that's yeah. the fifties process style, look at what's happening in the sixties. So sixties will become. I, that, I always just think of the sixties as a psychedelic area. <laughs> you know, it was all about the brain, wasn't it? It's the mind and how you could could do stuff with that. And that's, that's reflected in selling in that it was all a lot of the sales training, a lot of the, the focus was on, on personality styles. So it was trying to work out how your customer was thinking, what were their preferences? So how could we adjust? How could we adapt to do stuff that would fit better for them? So again, I said, well, that's, that's highly relevant now. You know, we talk about building rapport. We talk about being a bit like a chameleon in some ways in that we can present information and we can do things so that, you know, the person on the other side of the desk is is comfortable with what you're doing. You're not confusing them. You're not overwhelming them. You're doing stuff in a style that, that they like, you know? So again, I'd, I'd thoroughly <laughs> recommend that that's, that's what we can take from that era. Yeah. Look at seventies. Seventies for me was all about benefit selling features, advantages, benefits, yeah, understanding what's in it for me. That's what the customer's saying. So again, that's, that's another sales foundation. If I'm running training, you know, that stuff is very, very near the beginning of the course. And the, they're the building blocks. We've got to understand that people buy benefits. It's got to be relevant to them. Yeah, don't don't just sort of feature vomit all over people because it just won't get you won't get you anywhere. Yeah, absolutely. Eighties, um, eighties. <laughs> what a decade! <laughs> kind of interesting. <laughs> Strange music. Oh, I like eighties music. I think it's great. Um, but from a sales point of view, I, I just can't get out of my head this kind of greed is good. Gordon Gecko, you know, the whole kind of you know, Wolf of Wall Street type thing. And sales training was that whole kind of objection handling, you know, work out, batter the customer's objection away, you know, go, almost like going to an arm wrestle with them. Yeah, prove them wrong. And it's just like, oh, that, that's not really the cleverest way to operate. So 
for me, it's the hardest to take something from, though, though still thinking how you deal with an objection and if we kind of water it down and talk about treat concerns with concern, it, for me, that makes sense. Um, so, yeah, we, we can take that. But yeah, let, let's get into the 90s. Let's go into the 90s. Consultative selling. Yeah, that's when that was born. That's when the whole uh, Neil Rackham research and this way of asking questions to concentrate on the customer's needs really started to become popular. And, and that has to be a fundamental now. If, we, if we're not doing that as salespeople, it's going to be very, very difficult to be to be successful. So, you know, we can take all these things, they're a good basis. We can move forward into the noughties where we became far more value-based selling. So I, I think of it sometimes as... Is that what we call them, the noughties? I like that. The noughties, <laughs> I like Yeah, I always like I've never, I've never heard that. The noughties? I've always, I've always been like the zeros. What do we call that? Uh, <laughs> I don't know, the zeros just sounds a bit... Yeah, a bit <laughs> nothing, doesn't it? What are they? They're the zeros. But actually, it was a pretty cool decade. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the noughties. It was a good decade for me. And actually, from selling, because of this focus on value, because you know, I get a bit frustrated when people talk about, oh, you got to find the customer's pain, pain this, pain that, pain. Like, you're missing the point of gain as well. So if we think, yeah, they, they will have issues that have problems and have concerns, yep, we can deal with them. But if we can also think, well, how can we build extra stuff into what we're proposing? Well, that becomes a far better offer. So, yeah, we take that from the noughties and then in the in the tens, tens, I suppose, yeah. For me, that was all about salespeople having to give themselves that. I, I always referred to it as the sales stature when I was training in that in that time. Um, I think now we probably call it more personal branding, but it's it's making sure that you're considered the go-to person, that people want to work with you because they can see you've got a good pedigree, that you know what you're doing, that you've got and got all that kind of proof that you're delivering results for people. You now your, your company might, but then I, I'll go and talk to an account manager that I think is going to be best rather than you just because you might be you know looking after my area well uh, i want to talk to you i want to talk to the person that i think is going to give me the results um and then we come into the 20s and well at the beginning of the 20s i was saying collaborative selling and that's what i've written the book about that's where you know i've, I've sort of hung my hat and i think that things that have happened <laughs> at the beginning of the, that decade it, it actually only makes collaborative selling even more relevant you know, really wanting to work together, co-create and, and work in a way that, you know, two plus two equals equals five, if you like. That's that's where sales is headed. And, uh, you know, we, we, that needs bits from all of that evolution I've just been talking about to be most effective, but with a mindset that is all about, I'm here to collaborate, you know. That's my little trip today. That's kind of how I understand it and uh, sort of package things up in a, in a quick way. I love that. I, I love the the little sales history lesson. Um, you know, I, I guess I've never tried to think about things in terms of you know what what was the theme from that decade. Uh, that, that's that's fantastic. Um, well, let's talk a bit more about your book, uh, Selling Through Partnering Skills. Um, so you you focus a lot on the concept of of PQ. Uh, could you could you take our listeners through what PQ is and and how it could help them? Sure. So uh, hopefully the listeners have heard of IQ and EQ. Yeah. I describe PQ as the sort of the, the lesser known cousin, if you like. Yeah. So there's a lot of, has been written about EQ, emotional intelligence. And yeah, I think salespeople definitely need that. But I came across the concept of PQ um, a little while ago. And it's not something I've made up. It was something that a guy called Steve Dent, probably more than anyone else, had done a lot of research into. And he was looking at how organizations that were partnering, you know, how could they do that more effectively? Because if, you, if you're going to partner organizations, you want to get good bang for your bucks. And cut long story short, what he came up with is that, well, actually, it's organizations don't partner, people do. It's the people within the organization that have got to work together to make that a success. So he started looking at the people in the organizations where it had been successful, and he identified these elements of partnering intelligence, partnering skills. And so we're able to codify that we're able to understand it and train it so that people who are going into partnerships are able to do that more effectively but i, but I looked at it and went well do you know if you're involved in any sort of sale these elements of pq are going to be useful to you because kind of all kind of selling we're, we're hopefully moving towards some kind of partnering mentality even if it's not a formalized one it's well 
yeah, we, we want to work together. We want to build a relationship. And people talk about relationships in sales all the time. And so you know, partner is the sort of the, the strongest level of relationship, if you like. So I just looked at the six elements and thought, well, yeah, that, that's, that, that's all of us. You know, if, if, if you're not subscribing to that, again, I'd suggest you need to have a look at how you understand sales in the, in, in the one role, you know. So let's break them down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tell me, look, yeah, I guess uh, the break down all look, the what are the six elements that that you're talking about that help salespeople sell more effectively? Yeah. So if we if we look at the elements of PQ, I'll sort of go through them in in an order, but they're all they're all interlinked as you, as, as you'll start to hear. The first one is trust. So yeah, again, we shouldn't really have to explain to salespeople why trust is an important element. <laughs> you know, know your stuff, do what you say you're going to do. Um, be, let, let customers feel safe with the information they might be sharing with you. Yeah. Um, but do these things with their best intention at heart. This is the best trust builder. It's to, I'm doing all this stuff, but I want the best for my customer. That, that's the best way to build trust. And that's kind of using the trust equation. Um, and so that that kind of runs through all of, the, all of the rest of them, which include win-win, having a win-win orientation, which again, we, we've talked about that in sales for a long, long time. We sort of should be doing. But so it's understanding what does the other parties win look like, what they're trying to achieve, and what do they want out of the relationship. So how can we work together to make that happen? It's all about understanding expectations and sharing expectations as well, which comes out very much in one of the other elements, which is that of self-disclosure and feedback. So this is about giving a bit about yourself, helping people understand what you need for stuff to work, one important part, but also saying to customers that. You know, if you're not helping me help you, you need to know that. This, this kind of, oh, I can't, I can't upset the customer. I can't say things to them because they might be upset with me. No, if they're not doing their part of the deal, we want to be, we want to be coming back to them and saying, look, come on, it takes two to tango here. Yeah. And another of the elements, again, makes a lot of sense that if we get our heads around it and start to apply this practically, is that of interdependence. You know, so we know that a lot of salespeople are independent. Yeah, and certainly for your know, outside sales guys, you know, we, we, we've done it, haven't we? You know, you're there, you're on your own, you're driving around, you know, you've got to be a pretty independent animal. But you also got to know I've got a team back at the office, I've got a whole organization supporting me. And actually, my success is also going to be dependent on my customer success. So it's it's getting that balance right. And if we become too independent, it's not as effective if we understand those interdependencies and that whole kind of teamwork ethos that we need to, to bring to the yeah, bring brings the game if you like yeah so that's four of them so far fifth one um is comfort with change comfort with change so salespeople are change agents we, normally we are trying to get or to help people do something differently so yeah, we've got to be able to change ourselves but also i mean to really understand change what it's all about how people respond to it and how we can work with people even if it's just to move them off the status quo, so, you know, to just don't be carrying on doing the same thing. It's not good for you. Yeah, which kind of comes back to that feedback element. So you can see how they, all these things are, are linked together. Mm -hmm. Last element, PQ, the sixth element is um, it's future orientation. So rather than looking backwards, yeah, this is how we used to do things in the good old days. All your decisions are based on stuff that sort of probably didn't work then because maybe technology or options weren't available. We want to be looking forward to say, OK, well, this is where we're going. Yeah, you know, what's our plan? What's our plan together, Mr. Custer? How are we going to work to achieve this stuff? And let's make our let's make our decisions. Let's make our plans. Let's make our, our, uh, the way we work based on where we're going together. So they're kind of high level concepts, but you can certainly see how you can bring these down into sort of daily activity and the mindset and the ethos of how you need to be working. PQ helps no end, I think, in applying a lot of those things we just talked about, the good tried and tested things for the evolution of sales. You can just take them, pick the bits that we want and use them in a kind of very, very modern format that's going to help us you know, get the results we want. And that's six, right? That's six. Yeah, that's six. OK. Um, and uh, and I've heard you talk about the, the hybrid selling model um, being the future for sales organizations to talk to me about what that means and, and how, how they can harness that. Sure. So uh, this is where, this is where you're trying to work out what's going in my next book, isn't it? 
<laughs> because that that is what it's about, you know. It it was going to be anyway because I could sort of see or we could see this stuff coming. <laughs> you can probably work out why I've moved that forward in my own timeline quite a bit. It's not future interest. It's just well, this stuff is on us, and we just need to be starting to get our heads around it. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, I like I like building stuff around models. It helps me think, and I know people like model because it also helps them think and the model i'm using for that is that hybrid selling which is sort of a mix of internal external actually i'm not i'm not even going to go down that route I, i'm more i think about it is it's about having access to a whole bunch of skills that you can you can pull on you can use as and when it's required so you just do the right thing at the right time because you're able to do whatever it is that's that's needed so it doesn't matter if you're internal or external, um, if you're on the moon, it's it's kind of, <laughs> it's it's the stuff you need to do that's correct at the time. If you can do that, that's where success is going to be. And, and broadly, I'm breaking those down into, you start with essentials. So all the stuff that, you know, we've talked about, all the good, you know, sales best practice, planning, prospecting, having good conversations, writing proposals, all of that stuff. Yeah, that has to be still in play. You know, how can it not be? We need to though then now start to understand working virtual world. You know, people now we've got no choice. I mean, I was saying to you before we came out, I was like, um, <laughs> I'm still locked at home. <laughs> We're not allowed out. You know, nobody in the UK can really go and visit customers at the moment. You can tenuously, but you know, virtual using Zoom, using Skype, using whatever is an important part. Um, video is becoming more important, and and I just put in in that because it just helps my thinking social selling as well so using some of the, the, the social media platforms and things which just give us different ways to communicate over and above what we might have done in the past so we've got that as a kind of a, a bucket of, of stuff we need to do another element then is opportunity management so it's being very clear on what an opportunity is like and how we can see that through from start to finish, how we can sort of work out who the key players are, how we get you know mutual action plans in place, how we how we do all that stuff to keep things advancing, keep things moving. And what I think is very interesting about that as a particular strain of thinking, if you like, is a lot of the technology that's now available to help us with that and how we can use that stuff to sort of communicate and share and, and collaborate, you know, go back to our you know collaborative selling thinking. Um, salespeople need to be leaders. Not sales leaders, sales people need to be leaders. We need to lead customers. Again, I can hear people going, whoa, hang on a minute, you're talking manipulating. Oh, no, no, no. This is about guiding them, helping them. You know, it is confusing out there. And so anything we can do to help people understand stuff, and even if it's their own buying process, which <laughs> quite often it can be, if we can lead, if we can sort of guide, if we can help. Again, I think that's going to be another set of skills and stuff which the hybrid seller is able to tap into and use. Value selling, value based selling, that ain't going away. We still have to focus on customer value, what it means to them, how do we help them understand it, what it is for them, and how do we sort of work that out together. And yeah, you know, classic account management stuff is, is, is another is another element um, that you know building the relationship, expanding, working working through the organisation. Those are all <laughs> almost like different areas of selling. And so, you know, I think if you've got a toolbox, there are a bunch of different tools here. If you've got access to them all, you'll be able to do a far better job than if you've got a hammer. Well, everything looks like a nail then, doesn't it? So you just smash it, which won't necessarily be the most elegant and uh, <laughs> effective approach. So, yeah, look, that's that's kind of my, that's my thinking. That's how I'm structuring, how I'm putting stuff together and able to to, to do things which will help uh, help salespeople kind of, evolve and um be relevant keep you know keep being able to work with customers well fantastic um what i wanted but to don't tell anyone that because i've read the book yet that's a secret <laughs> <laughs> well uh, I'm, I'm excited well, to hear well, your, uh, <laughs> hear all your thoughts fleshed out on this and on paper someday <laughs> this is fantastic um tell me who is rocky and how does he help salespeople? Oh, my mate Rocky. Yeah, <laughs> I was talking to my sister about this the other day, and she was starting to get worried for me because um, Rocky's a robot. <laughs> um, is a uh, is actually it's actually an AI driven app, um, AI driven conversational bot, 
um, which which I use regularly for morning and evening reflections. So it asks questions, which makes me think. Yeah. And what Rocky can do, or what you, know, you ask Rocky to do, is to ask you the questions to help you around different areas. So you might look at wellness, you might look at uh, clarity, you might look at purpose, resilience. It's got all of these things, not, not just programmed, but it knows how to use its algorithms and you know, all that clever AI, AI stuff to be asking you questions and then guiding, you know, guiding you, helping with your thinking. Rocky now understands sales. Yeah, Rocky, Rocky's read my book. <laughs> Probably took him about three seconds or something like that. But no, joking apart, it's, it's got access to sales material, which if somebody was using it, they can say, well, actually, the bit that I want to keep reflecting on and where I want to get better is around my selling. I want it to be modern. I want it to be collaborative. Ask Rocky to help you focus on that. That's where it'll take you. It'll give you your reflections. It'll pull out information depending on your answers that it thinks is useful at the time. Um, so yeah, I'm, that's pretty new as well. I'm sort of quite excited about uh, my, my, my new mate. Um, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. the, 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 new buddy it. Rocky. I, I my like new it. buddy Rocky, the robot. I need to. I told <laughs> you. I told you. I need to get out more. <laughs> Don't we all? Right. Um, we, but uh, it's uh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I was just saying, it, it, for me, it's a really cool. It's a really cool tool for salespeople. It's what I'm including into my training now. And I'll say, look, because you can, you you could have me twenty four seven. I'm in your pocket. You can start thinking with me. You can finish. But what I actually say is, if that's what you think is useful, brilliant. But if you flick off the sales and decide that actually it's clarity or it's mindfulness or it's some mental health stuff that you think actually that's where I'm going to get better man for bucks, use Rocky for that. You know, use it to just. You just get your head right because that that for me is probably one of the biggest things that, that salespeople need to do these days We've got to have got to get our heads right to be to be able to be of value to our customers use to our customers yeah or to, you know, to look after ourselves absolutely well the next section of the podcast today is sales in 60 seconds so quick questions quick answers right right <laughs> i'll try i'll try <laughs> so so tell me how, how can sales people remain curious as the world of sales continues to evolve curiosity is so important it, it's so important I, I'd, I'd be amazed if you're in sales if you're not curious to be honest because you know i'm not sure how you how you'd survive but um um how can you be curious i mean the interesting thing about as the world evolves, it's so easy to get information to come to you. Rather than having to go and look for it, you can just program stuff that you know you can open your computer, you can open your app, you can do whatever, and there is information that's telling you what's happening at the moment. So that's information coming to you. How you use that though, that's your your personal choice. So you know it's it's kind of asking yourself why why do I want to know this stuff? You know, I, I guess it's probably. <laughs> you can get the information so what you do with it is the harder the harder piece and are there any particular resources about sales that you would recommend for salespeople to stay up to date apart from rocky um, <laughs> <laughs> um i'm tempted to say linkedin i'm also tempted to say stay away from linkedin um right I, i'll explain what i mean there there's a lot of good stuff on there there's a lot of good stuff and but there's also a lot of rubbish so if you can sift through it and if you can work out the things that you think are useful then you know there's a lot of people out there putting a lot of good stuff you know there's a lot of um you know trainers consultants people who i subscribe to this idea if you give information what goes around comes around you know have this stuff you know use it I, i'm all for trying to make salespeople better and better perceived full stop anyway so yeah, I know quite a lot of guys who are as well. So there's there's stuff there, you know. It's just kind of <laughs> reading it. Absolutely, yeah. And what would you say the most important skills or characteristics uh, an outside sales pe- person should have in their in their characteristic set or their skill set in their in their bag of of tools? Well, we've said curious, so I better not repeat that one. So I'm going to come up with another one. Um, outside salesperson energy it, it's a tiring job you know it, it, it's a tiring old job and not not just the sort of the physical energy of having to get up and physically shift and being on the go and moving there's that kind of mental energy which 
you know, we were, again, we were talking about this before, weren't we, that you've got to have all your mental energy and everything to focus in on the meetings and the calls and things you're going to have. But if there's all the other stuff going on around, like being stuck in traffic or not knowing if your flights are on time or are you even allowed onto site now with COVID checks and, and all this kind of stuff, it's, it's it, it can be draining, you know. So it's it, it, I think you need a lot of energy in, in, in that particular role. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a tougher role than people that don't do it realize. That's for sure. Um what uh, what tips do you have for reps to become customer ready before each meeting? Um, I can tell everyone what not to do, and it's certainly probably what everyone does do, self included. <laughs> and I do it, and I find myself doing. It, I think you know what, Fred? You tell people don't do this. What do we do? We're sat there in the car. We're a little bit early, and ah, let's just check emails or Facebook or Instagram or whatever kind of just you do things to put yourselves off you know we i say you we all do mm -hmm. you know and so rather than just the research and all the desk work and all that good stuff that we should be doing you know per se anyway it's turn the damn thing off give yourself five minutes to think about the meeting you know when taking the agenda because you will have sent an agenda i hope <laughs> looking at that playing the meeting through in your head thinking about what's going to happen, anticipating responses, doing the whole visualization thing and just starting it earlier. You know, there's a reason why the top, top athletes and you know top performers do the whole visualization and mental practice and rehearsal stuff because it works. So rather than distracting yourself and then thinking, oh, it's because we're starting a bad meeting. A lot of it can be down to you if you're not, if you're not properly focused in on it. So that, for me, that would be the, the kind of best tip for, for getting customer ready. Excellent tip. And what should all salespeople do every day to become more successful? Reflections. <laughs> I feel like I've used half my answers up already in the stuff you're asking, but yeah, that's something I've started reasonably recently, actually. Um, you know, using it doesn't have to be Rocky, but it's any kind of app or journal or, or way of just thinking, what am I trying to achieve today? What did I achieve today? Um, because sort of having that focus and then sort of being taking that learning and and just doing the whole aggregation of marginal gains thing. Um, I don't know whether that's a, an expression that you guys use over there. It's, a, it's, it's an expression that's used quite a lot in sport over this side of the pond, um, which is like all the little bits stack up. So just making tiny little adjustments, it's what top sports teams do. You know, they, they're already very, very good. So if they can just make little adjustments they actually, when you add them all together, it's quite a big change. So it doesn't, oh, that doesn't matter, that doesn't matter, that, but actually it does. You just keep making those tweaks, that'll start to, uh, that'll start to help you become more successful. There you go, it's two, two for the price of one. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Well, as an actionable takeaway for people, what should the field salespeople listening today do as a first step to get started on selling through partnering skills? Apart from the obvious, which is to get the book. <laughs> no, I'll tell you, no, don't, don't get the book. Um, to be fair, the book is in Rocky anyway. <laughs> so you could actually get that, do the reflection piece, and you're only paying sort of three, four dollars a month, whatever it is. Um, or can we, can we pop something in the show notes? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. If I'll give you guys a link which will take you to a uh, self audit, a PQ self audit. So I'll ask you um, a number of questions, answer as honestly as you can, because it's only going back to you. It's only so you can reflect on it. And it'll give you like a little indicator of where you are on each of those elements of PQ. A little, little score for what the trust is, a little cute score for win-win, um, self-disclosure, et cetera. So it'll get you thinking about it. It'll give you where you're at. And with the, uh, with the thing that gets sent in the email, it'll give you a bit of a write-up of it as well, because you know, I went through it fairly fast. Uh, earlier on in the, in the podcast so yeah let's 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 make that available to people and they can uh, they can find out and they can start to sort of begin the journey there fantastic um well uh i guess let me do a summary of all the things you've taught us here today um so first you took us through the history of of kind of sales thought since the 1950s which is really cool um, to see the you know how the how the pages turned through through the fifties and sixties and seventies and eighties nineties all the way to today to uh, you know the 
I guess we're calling these the 20s. The, I mean, hopefully it'll be the roaring 20s, but uh, the, today the 20s are all about collaborative selling. And, uh, and that's, that's, kind of, uh, that's kind of your area here. So your book uh, really focused on PQ, so collaborative selling, selling partnering intelligence. And, and this means that we should all, we, when we sell, we should work together and move towards a partnering mentality, you know, two plus two equals five, um, accretive relationships, I guess I'd call it, but uh, mm-hmm. it's, it's important to understand organizations don't partner, people partner. And that's, that's a really, I think, important thing that a lot of people miss when you're, when you're doing business with someone, it's, it's not just two organizations doing it. It's usually a team that's created between a, the, the, a cross organization or company team that's created for a period of time to bring new value to one of the one or more one or both of the organizations. Um, the, the, the six elements of PQ are first trust. So letting customers feel safe, uh, doing things with the customer's intention at heart, best intentions at heart. Um, then there's a have a win win orientation understand what your customers win, what a win for them really looks like. Then there's uh, having feedback. So understanding that w- with good feedback, you can understand if you're helping each other. Uh, there's inter- interdependence. Uh, and that's where a salesperson's success is, is uh, you know, it's dependent on your customer's success. And like th- looking at things through the, through the lens of we are in- interdependent. Uh, fifth one, there's comfort with change. So helping your customer be comfortable with change and and kind of mentally process what change is going to look like. Uh, and then finally future orientation. So mapping out where you're going and, and, uh, making a plan for the future and, uh, and, and figuring out where you're going with that future in mind. Um, we talked about hybrid selling, and that's uh, that's all about having access to the right skills at the at the right time. Hybrid selling, uh, I guess, is made up of starting with the essential sales activities, uh, then add in working and remote video, and then opportunity management and and kind of you know doing that in a high quality way is really important. Then hybrid selling also is 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 a uh, is about salespeople needing to be a leader, um, lead to lead their customer. And then finally, uh, value selling is a key part of of hybrid selling. So th- this is really valuable, Fred. Uh, where I, I guess we we, we kind of talked about where people can the next steps are with uh, to to learn about you. Is is there any other way that people can that it's worth mentioning that people can re- read more about your work or reach out to you? Sure. Um, I mean, look, we've mentioned LinkedIn. LinkedIn is probably as good a place as any. Um, yeah, connect me there. You know, let me know you've heard, heard me talk on this. Um, and yeah, you know, there's, I, I, try to, I try to practice what I preach and put some of the good stuff out there. Sometimes I slip a little bit and the last couple of days I've been talking about colored polo shirts for some reason I don't know I can't imagine what value that is to anybody but it was kind of funny it amused, it amused me and a few people at the time we're, we're allowed to have a bit of fun while we're at it um but now I mean I do I do try and um put out some decent stuff and keep you know I, I like to sort of keep my thinking out there if you like you know rather than just sort of sitting on it and you know holding it all to me if, if I'm thinking so I'll tend to put it out and see how people respond to it which is why I just thought I'd uh, I was happy to share some of the um the hybrid hybrid uh, selling stuff. So yeah, LinkedIn, that's the one. And um, well, fantastic. And, and, and this has been a great episode of the outside sales talk. We got, I think a lot of us got a, uh, a new, a new vocabulary word, uh, PQ uh, into our, uh, into our, into the words we use. Uh, if you're in field sales, you'll love Badger Maps. It's the number one route planner, helps you sell 20% more and drive 20% less. And you can get a free trial at badgermapping.com. If uh, if anyone can think of other sales reps that would benefit from learning about PQ and the stuff that Fred's taught us about today, uh, feel free to forward this episode on to them. Take care until next time, everybody.